Did you speak with Joel? No, I did not. Hello, folks. And this happened yesterday, the first time that we got to hear from Ben Simmons himself. It's really interesting to see some of the things he said in this press conference. But not just that, he gave us a little preview, a, a sort of taste of what we could expect to see, not only from himself, but from the Brooklyn Nets roster as a whole with Ben Simmons. Ben, what kind of work have you done to improve the free throw shooting percentage? No, I stopped working. Um, it's been in the gym, honestly. And as far as playing with Kyrie and KD, how do you think what you do accentuates what they already do on the floor well? Uh, I think it's going to be scary. I apologize if I'm getting ahead of ourselves too much, but you guys do have a game in Philly in a couple of weeks. Do you think you can be ready for that? You know, physically, mentally, you know, I imagine that's a pretty... I hope so. From the man himself, this team's about to be scary. His free throws are about to go splashing in the nets. I mean, this guy is going to make everyone's lives much worse than they already were, okay? Because he's going to dominate. It's just that simple. With all the things that have happened in the past year with this guy, with all of the disappointments and all of the saga, drama, whatever, now he's putting more pressure on himself than he's ever had in his career. Look, he may say otherwise, but to say that it's going to be a scary team with him and Kyrie and KD and... You know, his shots are going in now in practice. You do realize that if Ben Simmons fails to deliver on every single thing he promised, it's over for him. I don't think he's going to get another chance. This is his last chance, right? People have made videos talking about it already. I'm just late to the party, but we all see it. This is his last chance to prove himself, especially to prove himself being worth the amount of money he's being paid right now. All this pressure is going to keep building up until he starts playing games during the season. And depending on how late in the season it is when he starts playing games, it is going to build up even more, you know, anticipating the playoffs. And a lot of people have, in the back of their minds, Game 7 against the Hawks. They know what type of performances he's been known to put, put out in the playoffs. Now I'm going to talk about something that... I've struggled to deal with myself when talking about this issue with Ben Simmons and it's the issue of him having mental issues. I think it's not our place to talk about whether or not he has mental issues, right? And that's where a lot of us get stuck when we talk about this issue because it's not so much that he's been going through dark times that really people are arguing against. The problem that people like me have with the whole situation and with Ben Simmons especially is how inconsistent he's been. The stories keep changing. The timing of it too, the timing of him saying that he has mental issues therefore he needs to step away from the team. That came after he got kicked out of practice for acting like a brat and then also being told that if he wasn't coming back to practice he was going to get fined. So I do agree with people when they say you should not speculate on his mental health, whether or not he actually does have. But what we're saying is there are reasons to question a lot of what he says. Then I'm looking at the fact that the moment you get traded, yeah, y'all had a game in Miami on Saturday, but last night was your first game in Brooklyn since the trade, which happened just three days earlier, and you on the bench smiling up a storm. The world is beautiful, suddenly. Okay, these are all things that are inconsistent with a person that, according to the report, swore up and down, they had mental health issues. And so as a result, these are the kind of things that people are going to look at. Now, in the end. Well, you let's say one thing. Let's sure. just clean one thing sure, up. Sure. You can be dealing with mental health and mm -hmm. you can be in a moment where you're also smiling. Okay, that's so true. So both can be true. That's true. In this video that I just clipped, Stephen A. Smith basically makes the same arguments that I made earlier, right, with the inconsistencies of the stories he's told. But then he goes further and makes a poor, just a horrible assumption, a horrible stereotype that people have that, oh, you can't be happy if you have mental health issues, right? If you're happy, that means you don't have mental health. That's not true. And it's great that Molly was able to clear that up before he went on and spoke because I'm pretty sure that would have really really looked bad I mean it does look bad already but it would have looked way worse if nobody had cleared things up like Molly did and it just goes to show you the traps right this is the thing with talking about situation you cannot 
and you cannot go on and speculate on somebody else's mental health because that puts you in the wrong automatically, right? And I've struggled to talk about this issue because of that. I've been making the same mistakes Stephen A's been making. I've been making that mistake of assuming things, speculating on things that I have no business uh, speculating on. It's something that we have to do a better job of talking about. But at the same time, both things can be true. On the one hand, you shouldn't speculate somebody else's mental issues. On the other hand, you can have doubts in the things that said person has said in the past and the consistency or rather inconsistencies of the things he said. Please understand, mental health issues is a very, very serious Absolutely. thing. And you don't just throw that out for no reason, okay? If he's having those issues, we definitely are sensitive to it. The problem is half the people out there don't believe him. And this is where I see the biggest rift when it comes to the situation. When I watch videos, I like to go on the comment section and see what other people think about it. Because if I am to talk about this, I, I need to know what other people uh, have to say about the same situation. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to see in this comment section a similar argument thread uh, talking about whether or not Ben Simmons is having mental health issues. That's horrible. Don't do that. Okay, if you're one of those people, please don't say anything like that. One comment would say, Ben Simmons is lying. He's not really being genuine. He doesn't have mental health issues. He's just saying that so that he can leave Philly. Another section is, is just taking everything he says at face value, not questioning a single thing he says. And both sides are just wrong for that. I think there's room to where you could just not do either one, okay? Or at the very least, for the people that are on the camp of Simmons is not in the wrong or whatnot, at least acknowledge that there may be inconsistencies with the things he said, right? If you try to piece together some of the storylines of the saga, that things just don't add up, right? At least you could acknowledge that fact because there's no denying how many people feel this way. How many people feel like he is not only in the wrong, but he is being so dishonest and disingenuous and he just did this so that he can get paid and so that he could leave a situation that he thought was very unfavorable for him. Now, if he does not deliver on some of the things that he's hyped up in his presser, if he does not play to the level that many people have said he could play, right, defensive player of the year candidate, I mean, if he can't even deliver on that, they're coming for him. I'm just, I'm just say that much. They're coming for him. And boy, it's going to be ugly.